It's four o'clock on a Thursday. You know what that means, don't you? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi's Quarantini Happy Hour. Woo! This, not this week, today's starring special guest star, Mr. Henry Winkle. <laughs> and thank you, fake audience. And thank you, fake band, which I'm holding in my hand. Love the band. All right. Uh, let's see who's in that chat room already. There they are. My loyal band of misfits. Hi, guys. How are you? Let's see. Who do we have there? We've got Bob Gunnerfelt, Dan Weber, Ali Akira Canyon, uh, Rick Cabot Podmore, Nancy Collell, Greg Carroza, Dean Turner, Tony Salazzo, Andre Stepanian, Daryl Berman, and Michael McGraw. <laughs> And Alex Dillon, Jesse J. Peck, Steve Thompson, hello Steve, Jan Wilage, Robert Martin, Sherry Marcus Milano, hey Sherry, Pete Mason, Lamar Pecorino, whose letter I'm going to read to you in a second, Glenn Letts, Darren Moss, hello, from Down Under, um, Darren Wilson, Darren from Australia. <laughs> are you, both you guys aren't from Australia, are you? Dwayne Tribune. They named a newspaper after you. Fat Man and Two Slims Productions. <laughs> Ian Shortall. Paul House. Hello, Paul. Keeping you up late at night, aren't we? Uh, Bob Gunnerfeld said hello already. I'll say hello again. Uh, Jonathan Morse. Daryl and my other brother, Daryl. <laughs> uh, Dar Darren Moss says, yes, I'm from Australia too. Common name here. Pretty much everybody in Australia is named Darren. That's how that works, Mark Real. Uh, all right. It's 9 a.m. in Melbourne. Wow. And there's Ariana and John Pearson, Smith Sisters Bluegrass, K Quest. Wow, big turnout today. Nice. All right. Well, first, I want to let you know that I'm a <clears throat> little trepidatious about the audio situation on today's show. Um, we're going to be playing some of Henry's tracks. Uh, <clears throat> I realized I couldn't play it through my phone. Where is my... Oh, my phone's in the charger. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, um, so I realized, focus, there we go, uh, that I couldn't pay, uh, play, hello, Heidi Owen, um, Edmund Red. I realized that I couldn't play uh, the music through my phone uh, into the speakers because I'm going to be using, hello, Cass, uh, my phone to talk to Henry. So I'm playing the music off of my laptop. Hopefully won't accidentally hit anything and make the show go dark. Hello, Joe Gothard. How are you? Um, so there's that. Then I just called Henry a few minutes ago, made sure that he's got headphones so that he can listen on the headphones and not cause a feedback loop or a slap. So hopefully we've avoided all those problems. Um, <coughs> hmm. I must need... A swig of rock star. So, before I call Henry, I want to read this uh, nice email that uh, we got earlier today from Lamar Pecorino, who's in the audience today in the chat room. Hi, Michael. Recently, I've been visiting with some taxi members that joined upon my recommendation. Well, thank you for that, Lamar. Um, they have felt the sting of returns, as have we all. I found a way to explain the returns in a way that has made sense to them. The following is a portion of an email regarding returns from taxi. Uh, and, and he said to his friends, you are correct. Taxi is looking for specific things in the submitted material. That is due to the requirements of the listing companies. Uh, you or I could have an awesome song. If it doesn't fulfill what the other party, meaning the listing company requested, then it will be returned. As a foodie, I, tried to, I tend to equate this to ordering food in a restaurant. If a diner asks for a filet mignon medium, 
no, no, you can't have filet medium, gotta have it like medium rare or rare, um, then that's what they should expect. If instead they brought a porterhouse to your table, well done or rare, uh, you're gonna send it back to the kitchen. Too often we delivered a perfectly prepared chicken or fish dish to the table with the hopes that the diner will be impressed with the offering, but why should they? Uh, thank you for all that you do and the staff do for taxi members. And that's from Lamar Pecorino. So thank you for that great explanation. Uh, I think that's an even better explanation than my shoe explanation. You know, the ladies pump and the man, man's, or men's penny loafer. Uh, so good job on that, Lamar. Thank you. I appreciate the email. I appreciate that uh, you're taking the time to talk to those people and make them not feel the sting of a return. Isn't it amazing? People just think, but the music's so good. Somebody should just use it because it's great. They can't. It, it, it could be great, but it's got to be right for the scene. Um, Martin Gravel says, definitely a link between taxi and cooking. Uh, Lamar says, you are welcome. Well, thank you again. Um, <laughs> and Edmund says, what about steak now? Guess what I'm having for dinner when this is all done? A steak on the grill tonight. Um, okay, so all that said, in a moment, I'm going to call Henry Winkle, who's been a member for several years now. Um, I do remember a time, probably like three, four, five years ago, Henry, uh, he lives in kind of central California, and he was coming, I, I, he, I don't know if he drove down to the office just to see me, or if he was going to Los Angeles for something else and stopped by. Um, we had a really nice visit and he was going through some frustration um not really he wasn't getting a lot of forwards and then all of a sudden the light bulb went on for him um by trade i guess you would say henry is, is a jazz pianist and uh he just really like bit into the taxi apple uh like took a big bite out of it and went okay i am gonna figure this out i'm gonna get it right I'm going to get uh, some music forwarded, and he has, and he's now getting placements, and I could not be more proud and grateful that uh, he, he decided to take that big bite of the taxi apple and do the work and figure it out. And kind of the, the coolest thing is he's really expanded um, his skill set. He's not just doing jazz piano stuff anymore or even jazz like quartet stuff. Henry is doing very sophisticated orchestral stuff and orchestral hybrid stuff. So I'm gonna call him now and we're gonna put him on speakerphone and then we're gonna take it from there. Hello, Henry. Hi. You're there. All right. Give me a I'm little. I'm here. What a surprise. Yep. Give me a little level check. Talk to me for a second, Henry. Okay. Testing. Testing. All right. You're looking good on the meters. All right. Uh, so I'm largely going to turn the show over to you, um, so you can explain, you know, why you're going to play these certain things. Uh, do you want to do it in a format where you talk about the? I'm going to play the cues in the order that you sent them to me. Um, so, okay. do you want to do a little setup in each one and tell people what to listen for? Yeah, if you can, like, like right now, I have my, uh, uh, I have Logic Pro on the first one that I sent you, but I, I really don't remember the order I, I sent them. So, if you could, um, uh, you know, after I'm done talking, then you could maybe say okay the next one is this and give me a couple of seconds to pull it up so i can see the track sure okay well let's start with battlefield okay um it, all right uh battlefield let me, let me battlefield you know when i was going through these tracks yesterday to decide uh which ones to send i listened to battlefield and i realized that uh, mediocrity can be a virtue. And the reason I say that <laughs> is I, I was listening to it and I thought there's, there's not that much going on here. You know, there are some horn stabs, there are some uh, horn uh, things where they, where they go down a minor third, but it's basically a glorified drum track. So why did I send it? 
because uh, it's been uh, my most used uh, track on, on a variety of um, different genres. And so sometimes you, you don't want something that's just really good because that's going to take away from dialogue. And, uh, and this kind of music anyway, typically is not used under dialogue. Uh, this type of music um, is used like when people are going to war uh, or where there's a show, like on MTV, there's a show where there are really uh, demanding, physic physically grueling uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And um, so when they're doing those challenges, there's not a lot of dialogue. And that's typically when uh, these tracks will play Although uh, I, I've had uh, Battlefield, it's also played on a show uh, where they take a, a bunch of ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends and put them on an island. I think that's the premise. And um, so, and it's it's also played in a show where they put a bunch of people in a house and you know, and then bickering and arguing, and they all get drunk, and it's it's a uh, it's party time. So, kind of like tension cues. Uh, these, uh, I call them action orchestral hybrids for the most part, um, have, have a lot of uses over a wide uh, range of, of shows. And, uh, but basically, you know, the adage that you have drummed into us, uh, keep it simple, doesn't apply to these tracks for, for the most part. Okay. So that's that's what I got to say. Say about Battlefield is it's there's there's um, not a lot going on, but uh, nonetheless it's been used uh, a lot, and so uh, maybe then that's why I say uh, sometimes mediocrity is a virtue because uh, because there's not a lot going on that uh, it's not going to interfere with anything. Uh, I liked your reference to uh, the MTV shows or whatever where they put uh, somebody on an island with their ex. I once did that with my ex-wife. I took her to a deserted uh, island, and as soon as she stepped off the boat, I turned around and drove it back to the cruise ship and waved goodbye. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. kidding. <laughs> I hope she's watching. Uh, Anyway, all right, let me go ahead and play Battlefield, and then you can talk about it a little bit after we uh, finish playing it. Hopefully we don't have Okay, any... and, and if, you know, I can't, I, I'm not even watching the show. What an idiot. <laughs> I should be watching. You know, well, I, I, I've got my Logic Pro, I've got Logic Pro up, and I have some, some notes on the screen so that, uh, you know, I'm just on a blabbering pool. But anyway, go ahead and play it, and, and I'll pull up uh, YouTube. All right, great. Make sure your audio is muted. Well, you're going through headphones on your phone, but make sure your audio on your computer is muted yeah. because otherwise that's going to bleed into your phone and then cause a feedback loop. It's muted. Okay, great. Here we go. This is Battlefield by Henry Winkle. <sighs> Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> 
and the audience loved it. All right. Um, how was the level, by the way, uh, folks in the chat room? Can you let me know if the music level was good for you? People are saying they loved it. Excellent. Uh, yep, no wonder this one gets used a lot, has everything supervisor need, edit points, build, etc. Yep, good level. Yay. Wow. All right. All that work before the show is paying off. I love it. Martin Gravel says a bit low. Then turn up your speakers because everybody else says it's perfect. <laughs> All right. So uh, what else do you want to add about that, Henry? Um, well, I noticed uh, one, one person asked if it was in 5-4. It's actually in 6-4 time. Okay. And um, somebody commented about the snare. And, I, and I, I'd like to say something. Uh, oh, man, what did I just do? I'd like to say something about that. And uh, just, just some, and, and somebody else asked about the sample library. Um, so so I'll, I'll address all three of those questions. Okay. Uh, the, the snare, a really good tip when you're doing this kind of music is you, you want to have highs, uh, you want to have um, mids, and you want to have lows. So if, if we're talking about the string section, you're going to want the violins as, as the highs, and then uh, the violas at mid, and then you're going to want the basses. Now, as far as the, uh, the basses, uh, and basses and cellos are going to be your lows. Uh, and, and you want the same kind of thing uh, to pertain to your drum section. So the, uh, the snare, a lot of times I'll start out with the snare and then I'll bring in the big booming, uh, uh, drums. But you, you want to, you want to, um, uh, have all of the, uh, the spectrums from, from high to low covered. That's not a ironclad rule, but, um, it's, it's, it's a good thing to do. Uh, another good thing to do is know where the members of the orchestra sit. So, uh, for instance, you want to know that the violins sit on the left side of the stage if you're in the audience. Uh, the cellos and the bass players sit on the right. So you're going to want to pan your violins out of your left speaker, and you're going to want to pan your cellos and basses out of your right speakers. It's also a good idea to um, combine libraries. Uh, I submitted, when I first started doing this about three years ago, this type of music, I submitted a track and um, the screener returned it and said the strings seem a bit harsh. And uh, I'm not going to mention the name of the library because I don't want to get sued, but I realized <laughs> he was right. And every time from then on, I never used that library unless it was in conjunction with another string library. So um, combined libraries is a good idea. The, uh, another reason it's a good idea is because if you have a violin section, every one of those violins is going to sound a little bit different. And every sample library, orchestral, uh, every string library is going to sound a little bit different. And so uh, that, that's, a, that's another good, uh, good reason to combine libraries. Uh, another thing to remember is that horn and woodwind players need to take a breath. So you don't want to have a 20-minute a uh, one-note horn line, because <laughs> that's, just, that's just not going to be realistic. And a um, uh, couple of important things, too. Get libraries with horn articulations. You don't just, just want to put your finger on, on a key and have a flat horn line. You, you want it to go somewhere. Now... Granted, you, you, you could draw in a, a crescendo or a decrescendo or both, you know, a crescendo that goes to a decrescendo, but it's not going to sound the same as when a horn player, when he does that, when, when he goes louder, it's going to change the tone of the horn. It's going to make it a little sharper. And you're not going to get that with, with just doing volume automation. So get the libraries with horn articulations, crescendos, down a minor third. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I can't listen to the track as they're, they're playing, uh, but I you know I've heard them before, like I was telling you earlier. And so in this track, as far as, as libraries, oh, someone mentioned Bolero, you know, and um, I thought he's right. And then, and then I thought, I hate Bolero. 
<laughs> I really hate, hate that. And it's the most played classical piece in the world. Yep. And uh, I don't even think Ravel liked it that much. <laughs> so anyway, but it, you, you're right. Rhythmically, it sounded like, like Bolero. So yeah. uh, what I used for horns is, is I used um, some, some Junky XL uh, uh, patches. Junky XL is, is a guy who scores a lot of, um, you know, Superman, Batman uh, action movies. And I also used an 8DO library called Cage, and um, that has a lot of articulations, you know, down a minor third, up a minor third. Um, I used um, uh, East West. Hollywood brass and and trombones and uh, east west low brass. So basically, east west cage and a couple couple of junky XL um, uh, patches and sounds. And then I used uh, for the snare. It was the east west uh, drums uh, that that provided the uh, snare sound. I, I want to say something about about live buying libraries. Now, East West, when they came out with their four uh, Hollywood libraries, Hollywood uh, strings, brass, uh, woodwinds, and percussion, it was about $1,000. At some point, every sample library is going to go on sale. And it was a couple of years, and I noticed that there was a sale, and they were selling all four of them for $250. Wow. And so if, if you're starting out, you know, starting out, been doing stuff like this or, or tension cues or whatever, um, you're going to have to buy libraries. But when you get to a point where you, you have enough libraries, then you should really wait for the sales. Un unless something comes up that just absolutely blows your mind and, and you say, man, I don't have anything that sounds like that. And, um, and, and you just have to get it. And the final thing I'd like to say about this track is effects. Get yourself... Uh, some good effects libraries because when you're approaching an edit point and, and an edit point is where the track just stops, uh, you, you're going to want to want to have some kind of a riser going into that, some kind of a thing that lets you you know, hey, we're going to commercial. Right. Uh, some kind of riser, some kind of downer, some kind of boom, some kind of hit, some kind of impact. Um, my go-to library for that is a library called Trailer Expressions. No E, it's XP, Trailer XP Expressions. And it's, I believe it's made by Audio Imperia. And that's really what's going to, you know, just having those effects and those risers and that kind of stuff, that's really uh, what's going to set your music uh, apart from, from the ordinary Joe who, who doesn't use any effects. And, and, and you're going to want an effect uh, when you do your sting ending for the most part. So um, that's about all i got to say about that track. And I, I really hate that it sounds like Bolero, but, but whoever said that was absolutely correct. <laughs> um, I want to also mention um, taxi member Randon Purcell uh, has a company called Fallout Music Group, and they are building some incredible um, instruments, effects, risers, um, all, all that stuff, just like, I, I can't say that I use this stuff, so I've compared it to others, but I have gone in and played with the demos and watched all the stuff on YouTube. Um, and I know Randon, he's an extremely thorough, conscientious guy. And they built a library of these things that offers so much more depth to the end user, where you don't have to build a lot of stuff. It's already built if you want it, or you can, you can take what they built and modify it easily. So, um, Ariana, if you could throw up the, the link for uh, Fallout Music Group. They just keep coming out with great stuff, and the prices on it are ridiculously inexpensive. Uh, they're just inexpensive, period, but incredible value for those. Um, Henry, how did you learn all this stuff? Uh, because you were, I, I, I'm saying this jokingly and in quotes, but you were just a piano player before this. So how did you learn about all this stuff? Uh, primarily by watching YouTube videos. Uh, I watched 
I've always wanted to do this kind of music, but I either lack the knowledge, uh, not either, I lack the knowledge, um, I, and I didn't have the libraries, and I didn't know how to do it. And there are so many YouTube videos uh, out there that are tutorials on this kind of music. The other thing is, um, how, how does anybody learn how to play an instrument? How to play an instrument by ear? You, you learn by listening. You learn, learn by listening and imitating somebody, uh, another instrumentalist who you like, who you want to sound like. And um, so I listen to a lot of classical music and uh, that, that is, that's my music of choice. And, and that's, that's been for, for many, many years. And so when you're listening to this kind of music and you're watching YouTube videos, you, you, you tend hopefully to get a feel for it. Uh, this is not necessary and I've only done it recently, but you could also study the scores of Beethoven, Wagner, Bach, um, and see how, see how they did it. What instruments did they put, uh, together? You know, like Bach violins and the flutes or the cellos and the bassoons um, but that's not really necessary and Bach by the way who uh, who I think is the greatest composer of all time um, they didn't think so at his time and uh, he was not known for being a great composer and his, his music languished in obscurity for 75 years after his death and it wasn't until uh, another composer Felix Mendelssohn was given a, uh, a score of Bach's St. Matthew Passion, which is just a masterpiece. Uh, it's two, I think it's two and a half hours long. And Felix Mendelssohn said this when, when he studied the score. He said, this is almost as good as a 90-second drone view. <laughs> but but he, he, had that, um, uh, he had that piece publicly performed, and it... Um, it, it marked the resurgence in an interest in Bach's music. And uh, I, I consider him the greatest composer who ever lived, but, uh, you know, most people consider him one of, at least one of the greatest composers right. uh, who ever lived. All right, well, let's listen to the next piece, which is called Hell Beast. And I've got to say, of everything that you sent me, this may be my favorite. It's awesome. So here we go on Hell Beast. That's a great piece. I love it. So what would you like to uh, tell us about that one? 
that one, uh, you know, there, there are three responses that you get when you submit a track to uh, a music library owner or a music supervisor. Rejected, accepted, and what's the third response? Can you fix it? Yes, right. Edits requested, which means they like the track, but there's something wrong with it. There's something about it they don't like. Right. And I submitted this uh, to probably the pickiest library owner I know. Okay. And um, he said, I really like the first part, but I don't like the second half. Can you, can you make the drums louder? And the, uh, so I said, sure, I can do that. And I made the drums louder and I sent it back to him and he said, you know, I'm still not feeling the, the second half. Um, do you want to just pass on this one and, and work on something else? And I, I thought, no, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to be a quitter. And uh, I said, no, give me one more shot. And then I realized you know, he likes the first half. I mean, he likes the first part. Just copy and paste that. There you go. And add a bunch of vocals and it had a bunch of new stuff. And that changed, uh, that changed the entire piece. And so it, it got accepted and, and, it, and it's been placed. Um, now, I'm not sure how many of the, of the people in the chat room are familiar with Gustav Holst's The Planets, uh, one of the most influential uh, pieces of the 20th century. I used to play, uh, Gustav Holst was an astrologer and uh, he, he, did, he did a section of music for each of the planets, uh, Mars, and, and, and he would base the music on the astrological attributes of that particular planet. So Mars was, was very warlike, it's very aggressive, and um, when I used to play parts, uh, I used to do seminal music seminars, and when I would play parts of Mars, for the people in the audience, they would say, that's Star Wars music. And that piece that I sent you yesterday, what did you think when I sent, sent you that, uh, that uh, YouTube it, play? It was incredibly obvious. Uh, tell everybody what it was so they can go check it out. Um, uh, maybe Ariana can find it uh, in YouTube and pop a link into the chat room. I, I'm trepidatious about playing it during the show because I don't know if what YouTube will do about us playing something else that's already on YouTube as part of the audio and the show. But yeah, it was so incredibly obvious that John Williams loved, admired, and copied that piece of music. Yeah, exactly. The, um, the, the YouTube video, the movie, it's a 1942 movie uh, called King's Row and the uh, Cornwall, the composer was Eric Cornwall. And um, John Williams basically stole that theme. Well, okay, John Williams basically borrowed that theme and it became the theme for Star Wars. Right. Uh, if, if you go on YouTube and, and, and uh, just look up um, King's Row. Now, uh, back Ro to- Road uh, or Row? R-O-W-E or R-O-W? R-O-W. R-O-W, okay. Corn gold, yes. Mars, the bringer of war, very good. Yeah, uh, John Pearson says in the chat room, yeah, uh, he modeled it, <laughs> in quotes. I mean, it's so incredibly obvious. Um, I wonder, uh, you know, if John Williams ever got any flack about that. I mean, uh, he did for me, but but not personally. I mean, I, I don't know him, and, and and there are a lot of um, musicologists on, on YouTube that have given him flack about it. But um, hey, you know, we all borrow from from each other. But certainly, uh, the statute of limitations. Uh, I mean, that was a 1942 movie, and I think Star Wars was what the 1970s sometime. Right, seventy. I want to say seventy six. Maybe seventy-four. Yeah, but certainly not a lot of time ha had elapsed. Now um, back to Gustav Holst, since he um, he composed uh, the planets between nineteen fourteen and nineteen sixteen. So I felt pretty safe in uh, the last year using that that opening horn line, that melodic horn line in the very beginning. That's from Mars. 
Gustav holds the planets. So yeah, I did a little bit of borrowing in that piece, but um, but Holtz d- didn't have a have a demon choir like I do. So. All right. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the third one because we've only got about 24 minutes left of the big show today. Um, This one is called Drums of War. People are asking what the choir was saying. I, I swear they're saying, join taxi, get a forward, right? Oh, um, they're asking what, what choir I'm using? No, uh, what, oh, was what, the what, the, what the choir sa- saying? What is the uh, choir saying, right? Join taxi? Uh, yeah, <laughs> join, join taxi, get dispatch. There you go. Uh, yeah, which choir were you using? It's a, it's another ADO library. That was on sale. Um, I think it was... I think it was normally 400, 500 bucks, and it was on sale for 100 or 129, so something like that. And the way choir libraries work is they don't really say anything. You know, it's it, they're, they're saying things like do re mi fa sol la ti do, although they're not saying that. But <laughs> it's, it's basically um, two letter or three letter uh, articulations. And then what you do is is you click on one. And you put it in, it's not a sequencer, but, but, but you're able to arrange it so that, uh, so, so you click on an articulation, you drag it that down in, in this area, and then you click on another one, and you could, and, and you, so you click on eight or 16 different articulations, however many you want, in, with, in, in the order that you put them, and then when you play a key, it'll play the first articulation, when you play, when you lift your finger off and you play either that key again, or another key, it'll play the second articulation. But it does sound like, like they're speaking Latin. How long did it take you um, to do these last two pieces on average? Is it like a four hour thing, a 12 hour thing to produce something this complex and elaborate? I think it's more than that for me. It's probably a couple of days at least. Uh, how long and are those days? Eight hour days or 12 hour days? Um, Eight-hour days uh, interspersed with watching YouTube videos. Okay. So you get to a point and you want to figure something out and you go watch some YouTube videos and you play around yeah. with, with that particular yeah. library until you feel like you've gotten what you need from it and then you proceed. Yeah, because you, you get to a point where you get ear fatigue. Right. And you're, you're just you're just not hearing stuff anymore. And, um, and with that piece in particular... It, it kind of followed a very uh, kind of epic um, format where it, it's, it starts off with that horn. Well, anyway, I, I don't think it's that piece, but anyway, 
it, it starts off with a horn line, and then the, the, the choir, the demon choir comes in, and then I think the horns and the demon choir are, uh, are playing at the same time. And, and, and that's how a lot of trailer music works. It, it'll start off, uh, so, sometimes we get a solo piano, you know, and then, uh, and then it'll build from that, and then there'll be a second section, and that's going to be even more dramatic. It's going to have something different. And then the third section is probably going to have the most instruments playing at the same time. And, uh, you know, when, uh, sometimes uh, these, these pieces can have 200, 300 tracks, not mine. My, I think the most I've ever had is around 50. But still, when you've got 50 tracks playing at the same time, you have to learn how to EQ them so that they're not all... Um, uh, what am I trying to say, Michael? If you, try and make, if you try and make each one pretty on its own, you add them all up and they don't sound pretty anymore. And, and they don't sound pretty. And also, EQ is a big thing. Um, I, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it works for me. I take every track and EQ it, um, so, so I scoop out all the lows and the mids for the most part, and um, the, o the only track that I don't do that is if it's going to be a synth bass, if it's going to be the basses and the cellos, because, because I want that impact, I want that, that uh, low, uh, uh, low end, but I'm only going to give it to the the, the legitimate low-end instruments, and you would be surprised if you turn on your, your EQ analyzer, how many uh, sounds, like violins, for instance, spill out into that real low, the low range. Right. Yeah, if so, so, so what I do is, is, is I scoop it out on, mo on most every track. Good move. I'm a big fan of subtractive EQ. And my apologies, I just realized you had like a a full um, whole note rest on an edit point on Drums of War and I actually stopped the track there because I wasn't looking at the waveform. So uh, the last like, That's all right. yeah, last 10 seconds or so didn't get played. My apologies. Let's move on to the next one because we're pushing the clock a little bit here. This next one is called Feeling the Heat. Feeling the Heat. <laughs> Somebody asked the question, how long have you been a taxi member? Um, since November 2013. Okay, so six and a half years. You've come a very long way, my friend. Um, was that guitar part, or the guitar parts, plural, were some of those samples and some real, or were they all real or all samples? That was a track that uh, Dwayne uh, Tribune uh, played guitar on. Uh, Dwayne and I were asked by uh, a library to do a 10-track um, uh, album. And so um, so and we did, and we, we were struggling. Um, we were struggling. We had nine, and we were struggling to come up with the 10th track. And I, he sent me one, and, and uh, you know, I couldn't do anything with it. It didn't do anything for me. I sent him one. He said it's not really the right vibe. And that's, and that's where, where, where ego comes into, because if you're going to co-write with somebody, 
you need to supplement your ego. And if someone says this is not working for me, you know, you don't want to get all butt hurt and say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to work with this guy. And uh, and even further, if you're a piano player, if you're working with a guitar player, if you're working with a saxophone player, you're working with a vocalist, you're the background guy, you know. Uh, right. your, your 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 place is, is is to play in the spaces. So I realized that I had a track that I had completely forgotten about uh, that I wrote in 2016, and then I reworked it earlier this year. And it was a full blown orchestral. And I sent it to Dwayne, and I said, "Well, Dwayne, why don't you put some guitar on here, and we'll call it a rap." And uh, for whatever reason, the guitar just didn't. Set, the tone didn't sound right with the orchestral instruments, and I told him that. And then Dwayne said, "Well, I guess we're back to nine. And I thought about it. I thought about it for a day, and uh, you know, you know. Then I said, "Hey, Dwayne, why don't we just submit the ten tracks that we have as is? That way, we can get them in." Uh, I, I know that there was a taxi listing uh, for from this library for these action orchestras, and we'd like to get ours in before than the taxi people do. Um, and Thanks a lot. Taxi four, taxi <laughs> four would do because, because I'm a taxi person. Um, and 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 Dwayne could have said he he could have said, well, you know, you didn't like my guitar, so um, uh, so so I'm not cool with that. But but Dwayne. Instead, I thought showed a lot of class, and he said, "Yeah, let's do it." And and to me, that's that that's what collaboration is about. It's about you know you do what's right for the, for the two of you or the three of you. And uh, you know, I gotta say, hats off to, to Dwayne, who I think is in the chat room. Right, he is. Um, I also want to mention the fact that that time you came down to my office, I said, Henry one of the best things that you can do to move your career forward and have all this stuff come into focus for you is come to the road rally in November. And Henry said, yeah, you know, I'm not a guy who likes to go to big social gatherings, just not my thing. And we hear that quite often from people, but I really pushed him on it. And being the brave soul that he is, he came down and I remember seeing Henry Thursday night, uh, which is registration night at the road rally, and he was already loving just the vibe at the rally, the uh, camaraderie and being, you know, thrown into a, a, a pool of a couple thousand other like-minded people and everything. And uh, you ended up loving it. Uh, so I, I'm saying this so that other people, uh, when you have the opportunity to come to the road rally, don't pass it up because you don't like big gatherings. It's not like other big gatherings. And you came away from the rally with your best or longest running um, collaboration partner in, uh, in Joe Gothard, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, the, one of the best things that happened to me at that rally was, was meeting Joe. We've probably uh, co-written, uh, and, and that was three years ago when I went to that rally, and we've probably co-written about 100, 100 tracks, gotten a lot of placements. And uh, I met Dwayne at the rally the following year. I also met John DuPont at the rally. Uh, Dwayne and I have gotten some placements. John DuPont and I, we don't collaborate that much for whatever reason. I'm, I'm not really sure, but um, we, so, so we haven't got, we, we got one placement and it was a CBS uh, sports promo. And, uh, but hey, you know, uh, meeting uh, Joe and, and Dwayne and, and, and those two guys um, have, have become a lot more than just, um, uh, co-write partners they've, they've become friends you know we we call them we talk about other stuff other than music and um I, yeah i mean i mean the, the rally really you, you you said the rally would change my life well it well it did in that respect in, in in that i got some some really great new friends happens all the time uh you know i never envisioned when i started taxi that that would be one of the benefits uh building lifelong friendships but I, I literally hear that same story with different names hundreds of times per year, and it, it warms my heart. Uh, let's listen to the last one, which uh, is appropriately called The Last Heroes.
Great job on that one as well. Um, somebody asked a question that I think a lot of people may wonder, which, uh, what do you do about your levels? Um, do you follow any of the more scientific stuff on levels? Do you just look at your meters and go, yeah, that looks about right? Um, yeah, any thoughts on, on levels? Yeah, um, I don't do anything scientific. I, I basically look, look at my uh, stereo outs and uh, and say yeah that looks about right. Uh, a lot of a lot of these libraries, especially with this kind of music, they want it really loud. And so so I, I make sure I always have an adaptive limiter on on that um, on the stereo outs and also uh, ozone. I mean I'm still using ozone seven. I think ozone's up to nine or ten by now. But uh, but but those are the only two uh, plugins that that I use on the uh, stereo I said and, and I'd like to say something about collaboration too um, when you collaborate you've got two uh, you've got an extra set of ears listening to your stuff and they they can very likely catch something that that you missed and the, and the other thing about collaborating is you're gonna play stuff you're gonna play genres of music that you would never play ordinarily like Joe Joe and I uh, were asked to do a five-track album um, by a music library, and they wanted comedy country, and I think I think they also had a taxi listing for comedy country, but I'm not sure. Now I don't know the first thing about country music, but Joe does. But Joe doesn't know the first thing about orchestral stuff, mm -hmm. and so um, so so Joe would basically start the tracks and send me you know the drums and the guitar and whatever he did, and and and, and I, I put in a tuba because the tuba is always hilarious, uh, a bassoon, the clarinet, the pizzicato strings, all that kind of stuff. Right. But I never would have had the opportunity to do that kind of music, and, and it was fun, actually, um, to do that kind of music uh, if I hadn't been collaborating with, uh, with Joe. Um, that's a great point. You know, uh, every collaboration brings something, you know, to, to that mix that you don't do. Uh, everybody experiences that, and I don't think it's said often enough. Um, let's take a few more questions. We've got six more minutes left for today's episode. So if you guys, um, Peter Rahill says, who decided tubas are funny? Probably Warner Brothers cartoons, I would guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody else have any questions? Oh, by the way, I want to mention something really quickly. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the name Tony Bon Jovi. He actually spells it differently from uh, John Bon Jovi, but he is, in fact, John Bon Jovi's uncle. And he was also the founder and owner of uh, Power Station Studios in New York. And for my money, Power Station Studio A was probably the best sounding studio in the world. It's under another name now. He actually built a replica of it somewhere in South Florida. Uh, which is where he lives now. And Tony and I have been friends since probably 1978, I think. Um, another dear friend of mine is working with Tony right now. They have a product coming out that is a mastering tool that is idiot-proof. It's literally like one-button mastering. And I've listened to some of the examples of it. Um, and they're going to make it available to taxi members when it rolls out, when the public version rolls out. It's breathtaking. You literally click one thing and it just go, makes you go, holy crap, that sounds amazing. So I can't wait till that's done and you guys uh, can check it out. 
anyway, uh, any other questions? We're getting a lot of this is great because I'm an, Darren Moss says this is great because I'm an idiot. I, I wouldn't say that, at least not publicly. <laughs> um, how long after uh, joining Taxi did Henry notice more and more forwards were happening? Uh, I'm kind of a slow learner, and, and I came in a, as a predominantly jazz uh, fusion uh, and classic, you know, 60s jazz kind of guy, and learned pretty quickly that there weren't a lot of listings for that kind of music, and uh, there was the occasional big band, and, and I said, well, this is sort of big band, this sort of sounds like big band, and I'd take something that I had already done, and, and then it, I'd get a return. And then I, uh, I started noticing more and more tension cues, and I thought, well, those seem pretty easy. Um, well, they are and they aren't. And so uh, I got a lot of returns. And, and, and until I got the, the whole tension cue thing down, where I could differentiate between uh, crime investigation and sci-fi tension and uh, ghost, you know, uh, thriller Ghost. I don't want to say the H O R R O R word because I, I screwed that up on another episode and people thought I said something else. Um, <laughs> but it's, it, it's really all about the sound. I would like to say one thing before the show ends, and that's: is anybody out there who's a violin player? I would love to work with a um, with a, uh, a violin player because uh, I, I'm working with four guitarists and there's also a saxophone player, Yo Polly. But and, and we don't do that much, and the reason for that is there's not uh, music supervisors don't want saxophone players, uh, unless it's a specific request, and we have had those. But um, saxophone, I guess, sounds too much like the human voice, and it's and it, it takes away. They're fine with piano. They're fine with guitar. Uh, they're fine even with uh, with songs um, in in some instances. But yeah, if anybody uh, plays the violin, I would love to work with a, a violin player. Um, maybe even incorporate the real violin into the orchestral samples. Uh, what is, uh, why can I not think of his name? Uh, the guy who taught a couple classes at the Road Rally, Martin. I can't, re I can't believe I can't remember his last name. Um, anyway, he's a world-class violinist. He grew up in Austria with a grandfather who was a classical violin teacher. Um, I'll think of his name and connect you guys. He, his, remember, That'd be great. I played his stuff at the Road Rally uh, in the Grand Ballroom a couple of years ago. One of his tracks was just breathtaking. Um, oh, I remember that. Yeah. So anyway, he's, he's back in Austria now. Uh, and I don't think he's actually working on much of his own music right now, but I think he would relish the opportunity to play the occasional violin track for you um, and... and I, out of all the members we've had in all these years, he's probably Martin Tichy. Thank you, Darren. Um, Martin Tichy, T-I-C-H-Y. Um, probably the most accomplished violinist that I've ever heard. And he can play in any genre. I mean, he's not just classical. He's not just orchestral. Uh, you know, he does like hoedown music. I think he actually played in like a hoedown band for a while. Um, anyway. So that's that. We got a minute left. Um, somebody asked where they can hear more of your stuff. Do you have this stuff up for public consumption on your taxi? Yeah, I do. On uh, on my taxi page, there's some stuff, and also um, on my SoundCloud page. Uh, let me see if I can find those uh, those addresses. I can have Ariana find them and post them in the chat. She can also post them in the uh, the comments in the. Uh, and the information stuff under the video as well. Um, okay, I have it right in front of me, if that helps. Okay, sure. Uh, the taxi is www.taxi.com, uh, H-W-I-N, as in Nancy, C-K-E-L. And the SoundCloud, um, where you'll hear a lot of the stuff that you heard today, is uh, H-T as in Tom, T as in Tom, P as in Paul, S is in Sam. Then there's a colon forward slash soundcloud.com slash uh, my first name, H-E-N-R-Y. And then there's a, 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 a dash or whatever that thing is. And then my last name, W-I-N-C-K-E-L. And th those would be um, probably the two best. If, if they want to hear jazz, they, they, can, they can go on, what is it, ReverbNation.com or something. Anyway, those 
I have a lot of tension cues on the taxi site, and I have a lot of everything. I mean, the SoundCloud page is, is filled up. I can't put any more on it, so. Uh, and my apologies. I think I may have left a C out of your name in the email. I could be wrong about that because, you know, I, I know you pretty well. Um, uh, so I just, when you spelled, I went, oh man, I think I left a C out. I hope that's not the case. In any case, I just want to say thank you for uh, taking the time to prep this show and get it together. And uh, just, I I'm incredibly proud of you. Um, the way you've transformed yourself, you've figured out the industry, you've figured out how to make music that people actually need and will pay for. You figured out how to do probably the most difficult thing that somebody can do is orchestral or orchestral hybrids. It takes a lot of work, a lot of knowledge. You have to really understand how orchestral players play their instruments, what the nature of those instruments, and you've done it all, and you're remarkably humble about it. It's like, yeah, no big deal. I just, you know, sat down and figured it out. But uh, I think yeah. everybody in the room uh, throughout the whole episode making wonderful comments. So thank you for sharing this stuff. And people are saying, have Henry back. So I will. I promise I'll have him back sooner than later. Henry, thank you so much. Congratulations on your success and for doing such a great job. Um, you know, just finding a new musical life for yourself, man. You did it, and uh, not many people would do it. Um, so congrats on that, and I will talk to you soon, my friend. All right. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Thanks. everybody. Henry Winkle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, take care, Henry. I'm going to sign off the show. And All right, everybody. Uh, we will see you. Remember, we're off tomorrow for the 4th of July. I hope you all have a wonderful Independence Day if you're from the U.S. Um, those of you who are, are, are outside of the U.S., um, yeah, we're taking the day off tomorrow because it's a holiday weekend. Um, thanks, Ariana. Uh, yep, got the steaks ready to go. I salted them, put a little pepper on it before the show, so they should be ready to rock. And uh, I will see you guys on Monday. Oh, don't forget, uh, first of all, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to this channel so you can be alerted when these shows go live. Um, also, give us a thumbs up if you haven't. Um, tell your friends and family members that you can get all kinds. Oh, I want to mention something. Somebody the other day was telling me that they signed up for a course, which was okay, you know, they weren't like raving about it. And it was $3,000 um, for a course on how to get your music, uh, make the right kind of music and get it into advertising stuff, $3,000. And, and the person made a, a comment during our phone conversation. It was basically like, you know, I, I've learned at least that much, if not more, on Taxi TV for free. So uh, there you go. Um, see you guys on Monday with, uh, we're going to have an indie film music supervisor who is also a world-class expert on vintage music and how it's used in film and television as well. That's going to be a great episode. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Monday. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse for another. Where's the, the audience? There's the audience for another exciting episode of Taxi TV. Bye, you guys.